right, we begin here on Jefferson Avenue, right outside the top supermarket. The gunman behind the May 14th attack appearing in federal court today, 24 hours after he was sentenced in state court and found uh, and sentenced to life in prison. And while the spotlight in this case now shines mostly on courtrooms, we want to turn the focus back to this community, to this neighborhood. Now, shortly after the mass shooting, politicians and others flooded this area with promises to invest in the future here. Now, nine months after 514, we are looking at what has changed and what hasn't to build a safer, stronger community and where work still needs to be done. This, once again, is part of our follow-up series. It's our commitment to staying on top of stories that matter the most to you and our community. And I took those questions today to people who live here, who have lived here their entire lives, asking them what should be done to make this a better, safer place to live. And here's what they had to tell me. Hopefully I get to, you know, one day create my own business and help out the community. Is that your goal? Yes, yes. 19-year-old Roy Taylor grew up in the Jefferson Avenue neighborhood. He loves his community but wants to see more businesses here. What would you like to see here? Man, a lot of new things like new stores, probably some more hooping centers. You see, empty parking lot. What's your message to people who are in a position where they could help and invest in this community but they're not right now? Man, if, I mean, it's up to you, for real. If you want to come in, uh, hey, welcome. Thank you. We need it. We need help. Yes. It almost felt like we were being forgotten. The, the tears, the trauma, the lack of safe food options. Franchelle Parker is the executive director of Open Buffalo. Her office is on Jefferson Avenue near Tops, and she says she won't stop working until she sees change in this neighborhood. To ensure that we have um, basic needs in this surrounding community is, is my life's work. Right now, there's only one grocery store making it a food desert, and some people, including Franchelle, haven't been back inside Tops since the mass shooting. So right now, your only shopping option for food is Tops? Tops. Yeah. Neighbors tell me they'd like to see the boarded-up homes and businesses refurbished, and they need more shopping options. You live right here? Uh, I live on Dodge Street. So do you walk everywhere? Yeah. So what do you think should come here? Walmart. What do you think, what would you like to see here? Uh, change. Also, places that we can go shop and actually afford. When you look around here and you see all the empty buildings, the empty lots, the houses, what do you think? I feel like maybe the city don't care because if there's houses that are abandoned, why not do something about them? Franchelle says everyone from elected officials to community members and business owners need to work together. Until we've done that, I, I don't feel like we're, we're doing justice to the lives that we lost on May 14th. It'd be so much better. Roy is in college studying business and says he will do whatever he can to make sure his neighborhood isn't forgotten. So if that's nobody else good. brings it here, you plan on building it yourself? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's been a goal in my head since I was a kid. Yeah, he is a motivated young man. It was great to meet all of the neighbors here. It's a discussion that we will continue to be a part of with local leaders and community members as well.